SpaceX Starship updates, Crew Dragon testing and progress at Kennedy Space Center. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. Maybe you've noticed that I did not answer a single comment on the last episode. I used the last few days to move the studio to a new location. It is not perfect yet and I'm working on it, but we'll get there. More space, a new set and lots of improvements on how I go about recording my episodes. It's not completely finished yet, so expect some more changes in the coming weeks. What do you think? Like the new place? But of course, besides setting up my new studio and staring at my new Mars globe for hours, I've been busy making a new episode for you. And as always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Updates in last Thursday's episode, we were finally able to witness the tank section being moved from the shipyard to the launch site, and it's already been lifted up onto the launch mount as well. If this isn't a sight to behold, I don't know what is. When I see these kinds of pictures from Boca Chica, it almost looks like a sci-fi movie, as the Starship prototypes look so different from anything we've seen so far. Starship Mark I has been lifted onto the launch mount. So in theory, this should already be the position it will take off from. Of course, engines and fins will still have to be installed and the cone section is still missing as well, but we're getting closer and closer to the moment when SpaceX launches its next flight test. This time with a much bigger test candidate than last time. And preparations are going on at both sites. The cone section is being outfitted with the famous canard fins again. These are the same fins we saw at the presentation, so it wasn't all for the show. What we saw back at the end of last month was the real deal. It wasn't finished yet though. If SpaceX follows the same pattern as before the presentation, we should see aerodynamic covers get installed after the fins are attached and after that, the cone should be transported to the pad as well. We got another look at the aero surfaces to be attached directly above the lower fins, which are not installed again yet. The lower fins are still waiting at the shipyard as well, amongst numerous other parts. These parts are now being transported to the launch site for installation. In fact, we will probably see a whole caravan of deliveries from the shipyard to the launch site in the next few days, as SpaceX chose to move the tank section without the fins, no doubt due to limited space on Highway 4. The big question right now is when that will happen. At the time of recording this episode, the test dates from November 2nd to November 4th were gone again. The dates for 7th, 8th and 12th are still there though. My guess is that on these dates, SpaceX will be moving the cone section to the pad, stack it, connect everything and then they might even do first pressurization tests to see if all the connections are sealed and good to go. If these tests are passed without problems, Starship Mark 1 in theory would only need the engines back to be go for launch. Every day that passes brings us one day closer to the launch, but that might still be a month or two in the future. Crew Dragon testing. But what to do in the meantime? There is one other very important SpaceX project closing in on the finish line. Crew Dragon Demo 2. And we're getting closer and closer to the final tests before the Dragon is finally allowed to carry astronauts to the ISS. SpaceX showed two pictures of freshly installed Super Draco engines with a caption that confirmed the engines were being installed on Crew Dragon capsule C206, currently assigned to the company's Demo 2 astronaut launch debut. Super Dracos are used to carry out in-flight aborts on the Crew Dragon capsule in case of an emergency. It seems that the redesign after April's anomaly is finished and the system is ready to go. Prior to these pictures, on October 24, SpaceX also showed a short clip of a Super Draco test fire. In this case, we can see the capsule C205, which will be used on the upcoming in-flight abort test that needs to be passed prior to the Crew Demo 2 flight to the ISS. At present, Crew Dragon's in-flight abort static fire test is expected no earlier than November 6th, while the abort test itself is now scheduled to launch no earlier than December 2019. The Demo 2 mission then is scheduled to launch no earlier than Q1 2020. Elon Musk already confirmed that the spacecraft and its designated Falcon 9 rocket should arrive at Pad 39A and be ready for a launch as early as this month. I will definitely do a live stream of the in-flight abort test and as soon as there is a solid date, I will let you know. Progress at Kennedy Space Center While work is continuing at an insane pace in Boca Chica, SpaceX at the same time is preparing Starship launches out of Kennedy Space Center. 
David Lavoy was busy for What About It again and provided us with pictures of the latest progress at Pad 39A, where SpaceX is erecting a launch mount probably similar to what we can see in Boca Chica right now. Tents have gone up and preparations continue with the help from a heavy lift crane in the location where we should see the launch mount being built. And the round circle in the foreground could already be the landing zone for Starship prototypes. If we're lucky, we might get a good view of this when the Dragon in-flight abort test happens. The camera on board the rocket should give a nice view of what's going on on the ground after liftoff. And at the second, equally important location at Roberts Road, SpaceX is still in full swing getting their Starship production site up and running. Terrain leveling and lots of excavation work. After that, we should see construction being started on buildings. If SpaceX continues as in their plans, this should become a permanent installation. The typical SpaceX tents are already in place. And it seems like SpaceX is very eager making business as well. In this picture, you can see a possible Starship bulkhead and ring sections already laying on the ground. Or is it a super heavy bulkhead? What do you think? It's safe to say that SpaceX now is not building Starships in two sites, but in three. Typical SpaceX timeline. Why wait with Starship construction until everything's built? Every time SpaceX makes the progress go faster, I think this is it. And then a few days later, we uncover yet another effort by SpaceX to make the progress even go faster. Go SpaceX! SLS Progress Update But SpaceX is not alone at KSC. NASA is working on getting every component for SLS and the launch tower done. And what a launch tower it is! This gives a good idea of how large SLS will be when it lifts off from KSC, hopefully towards the moon. Most of the major components for SLS are in the final phase of development and Artemis 1, a first test flight without a crew, is slated for launch in 2021. We can also see a new propellant tank being erected in close proximity to the launch pad. Even though there have been long delays in the development and even though SLS is just slightly over budget, we're getting closer to a launch. Just recently, the Marshall Space Flight Center completed the integration of the core stage, getting the rocket yet another step closer to a launch. In fact, all the major components are either finished or well into the end of development. If nothing goes wrong, we should see all these parts come together in the next few months for integration and final testing. I don't know how you think about SLS, but all arguments aside, it should be quite the sight when it launches for the first time. While I was busy moving my set, I got some unexpected help. I was approached by Columbus, a German family-owned business specialized in handcrafting the best globes and maps in the world for over a hundred years. They asked me if I wanted to improve my set and they were willing to gift me a handcrafted globe to do so. And this is not any globe as you might have noticed by now, it's Mars in all its glory. Picture material directly from NASA and handcrafted onto an acrylic globe. Of course I said yes and I'm so looking forward to discussing SpaceX's operations on Mars with you as soon as the first starships arrive on site. To pay back some of the love, let me introduce you to the people who gave me this present. Columbus has much more to offer than just this one globe. From the smallest globe only measuring 12 cm in diameter all the way up to 100 cm, their shop has it all covered. And since 1909 they've come a long way. Based out of Berlin, they've made their business known all over the globe. Becoming one of the world leading experts in reducing whole worlds into a more practical format and in the process making the world's finest globes and maps. So thank you Columbus for gifting this globe to What About It, it is much appreciated. If you're still looking for a perfectly handcrafted little world to put onto your desk, check him out. I've already spent hours looking at mine in detail and the quality is just flawless. There is something very satisfying about a good globe. The link to Columbus's website is in the description. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. Has SpaceX successfully tamed the Super Draco and are they already building starships at Roberts Road? As always, tell me in the comments. Here we are again at the end of the episode thanking the most wonderful people in the world for their support. And it is amazing to see how many of you have teamed up in the last few months to give What About It that extra little push needed. And as always, there are more names to put on that ever-growing list, so everybody please give a warm welcome to Steve Ehrman and Michael East. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It. If you liked what you saw, please don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button because that helps the most. 
feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content. As this gives me the time to focus on what I love doing the most, to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. I will have so much Hall effect in my recording you cannot stand it. This month 2019. <laughs> erecting, they're erecting something. Ah, this studio is so big I can even move around. I've already spent hours looking at mine in detail and the quality is just flawless.